we're calculating the statistics for a probability distribution. And remember with the probability distribution, now when you need to calculate a mean, you calculate an expected value. You calculate what's called a weighted average mean. Now just to recap here, this gave us the probability distributions really for security I and for the market. And the first thing we did was we calculated the weighted average mean for the security and the weighted average mean for the market. The return we expect in the next time period for the security, the mean of the distribution today, 4.2%. The return we expect in the next time period for the market, the mean of the distribution today, is 6%. We then calculated the deviations from the mean. Now deviations are important. All the risk measures are a function of the deviations. And the deviation is the observation minus the mean. These are the deviations for the security. These are the deviations for the market. Now, once we have that now, we can calculate risk measures for uh, the various assets. And so the first one we're going to do now, this is going to be the, uh, the risk measures for the security. And the first risk measure we want to calculate now is variance. You recall now variance doesn't have a unit value. Uh, it, it doesn't take on any unit value. It's not a percentage, not a decimal, it's not any of that. To calculate variance now, variance is the mean of the squared deviations. This is a probability distribution. We're going to calculate a weighted average mean. These are the deviations for the security. Now, what you see here is that we're going to take the deviations, square it, and then multiply it by this probability of occurrence. So in this case, a negative 9.2. Now there's a 20% chance that the deviation for the security will be 9.2. We want to square the deviation, so 9.2 squared, negative 9.2 squared, which will give you a positive number, multiplied by the probability of occurrence, which is 0.2, and you get 16.9280. 1.8 squared times its probability of occurrence, which is 0.3, would give you 0 0.9720. 4.8 squared times its probability of occurrence, which is 0.4, gives you 9.2160. And lastly, for the security, a negative 6.2 squared times its probability of occurrence, which is 0.1, gave us 3.8440. Same process for the market deviations. We would take each deviation, square it, and then multiply it by its probability of occurrence. So the first one, negative 2 squared times 0.2 gives us 0 0.8. 0 0.3, I'm sorry, 3 squared, a negative 3 squared, which is 9, multiplied by 0.3 gives us 2.70. 6 squared, which is 36, multiplied by 0.4, gave us 14.4. And a negative 11 squared times 0.1 gives us 12.10. Those are the products, remember. And to find the mean, you simply sum the products. So we took the square deviations, multiplied them by their probability. We sum these products. And that's going to give us the variance, which again is simply the mean of the squared deviations. For the security, if I sum these numbers right here, I find the variance to be 30.96. For the market, I square the deviations, multiply them all by their probability of occurrence, I sum these products, I get a market variance of 30. Standard deviation is the next statistic that you calculate, and it's simply the square root of the variance. So for the security, the square root of 30.96 is 5.5642. The important thing to remember with standard deviation now is that it does take on a unit value, and it takes on the same unit value as the distribution. So these were percentages. So 
this standard deviation is actually 5.5642%. Okay? The coefficient of variation, this is your risk per unit of expected return. It's defined as the standard deviation divided by the mean. The standard deviation, 5.5642 for the security. Its mean, its expected return, is 4.2%. Standard deviation divided by the mean gets us a coefficient of variation for the security of 1.3248. Coefficient of variation. Your risk per unit of expected return, all things being equal, you'd like that number to be as small as possible. Another measure of risk and return is called the Sharp Ratio, S-H-A-R-P-E, named after William Sharp. The Sharp Ratio now is the inverse of the coefficient of variation. It's your return per unit of risk. It's the mean of the distribution, 4.2% in this case, divided by the standard deviation of the distribution, which for the security is 5.5642. Take the mean, divided by the standard deviation, we get 0.7548. Now that's your return per unit of risk. How much return would you like per unit of risk? You'd like as much return as possible. So you'd like this number to be a large number. For the market, same thing. We calculated the variance to be 30. You take the square root of the variance, you're going to get your standard deviation, which is 5.4772% for the market. To calculate the coefficient of variation for the market, it's the standard deviation of the market, 5.4772, divided by the return of the market, the expected return, which in this case is 6. Risk per unit of expected return, we get 0.9129. So for the market, you're getting 0.9129 units of return for each one unit of risk. The risk per unit of expected return. The Sharp Ratio again, this is the inverse of the coefficient of variation. It's return per unit of risk. Coefficient of variation was risk per unit of expected return. In this case, return per unit of risk, which is the Sharp Ratio. For the market, the return, the expected return, is the mean of the distribution, 6%. And you divide that by the risk for the market, the relevant risk here, the standard deviation, 5.4772. For the market, you find a sharp ratio of 1.0955. As you look at coefficient of variation, sharp ratio, if you had to choose between assets, these would be the indicators that you would want to use. You would want a coefficient of variation that was as small as possible. That is, risk per unit of expected return, you want to be small. So if you had to choose between asset I and asset M, you choose asset M. It has a smaller coefficient of variation. If you want to choose on the basis of the Sharp Ratio, that's return per unit of risk. So you'd like that number to be as high as possible. And if you had to choose between security I and the market, you would choose the market investment because it gives you a it gives you more return per unit of risk. That's the Sharp Ratio. Just so you know, the coefficient of variation, the Sharp Ratio, will always lead you to choose the same asset. That is, the market is superior to the security when you look at these measures of risk and return.